Hey everybody, it's Chris from Xano, and today I'm going to give you a quick tour of the Visual Builder. This is where you will be spending a majority of your time when working in Xano. This is where you build all of the business logic for your backend, whether it's APIs, background tasks, custom functions, middleware, or triggers, you're going to be working inside of this Visual Builder, so it's very important, of course, that you understand how it works. Starting with a very basic example, this is a typical signup endpoint that Xano can auto-generate for you. In the Builder, we have three separate sections. We have our inputs. This is all of the data that the business logic will need before it can execute. The inputs are typically going to be anything that is provided from outside of Xano that is user facing. So in this case, it would be a sign up form. We can add inputs by clicking this add input button here. You have a ton of different field types to choose from. I won't get into all of these today. We have a ton of resources on the different field types available in our documentation. For this example, we're going to go ahead and stick with the field types that we have here. As you add field types, you may want to make changes to them. So you can just click on those and make any changes you'd like. You can click and drag and reorder your inputs. This doesn't really have an impact on how the business logic runs. It's really just for you. There are some key options that are pretty consistent among all of the different field types that I'll take a look at. We have a description. Again, this is just for you so you can describe the purpose of this input. Most fields offer the option to choose between a single or a list. So this is just determining whether or not this input will take a single value or a list of values. On most fields, you have the option to enable nullable values. So null is a very specific value that you may want to send to signify that there is no data present in that input. You can specify a default value, which will be used if no value is provided. And then there are some configuration options, such as enforcing whether or not this field is required for the request to complete, or if that field contains sensitive data. And finally, you have filters that you can apply to these inputs. And this is like enforcing minimum or maximum lengths, uh, whitelisting characters, things like that. The second section is the function stack. This is where all of the business logic lives, and this is what will actually run when this endpoint is called. To add functions to your function stack, you just click add function down here, and that brings up the panel with all of the available functions. You can quickly search and find what you're looking for. You can hover over a function and toggle it as a favorite if you know it's one you're going to be using often. They will live right up here in your favorites section right when you open the panel. Or you can just click through and find the one that you need. The function stack has two different views available. We have a compact or a comfortable view just to give you a little bit more visual space between each function. Certain functions have the ability to be expanded or collapsed if they have nested elements such as this conditional statement. We can do that by clicking the arrow right there, or we can use the collapse and expand button. You can hover over each function to get some standard options, such as adding a new function right below that one, enabling or disabling that function, cloning that function, editing the function description. This description is just for you, so you have an easier understanding of what that function actually does. There are some additional options here that you can access by clicking more options. We'll go ahead and delete that extra. You can click and drag to reorder your functions. You can hold shift and select multiple functions and reorder them. When you have a function selected, you're offered a few additional options, such as disabling a group of functions. You can also cut, copy, and paste. You can group them together, which does not affect the actual logic itself. It's just a visual tool for you. And finally, you can search your function stack, which is especially helpful as it gets longer. You can search by function name. So you can see I searched for create auth and we have the create authentication token function highlighted. Or you can also search by variable name, which is pretty cool. So if I search for user, all three of these functions are highlighted here. There is keyboard navigation available. If you want to review the keyboard shortcuts, you can click this option right up here. These keyboard shortcuts will allow you to work very quickly inside of your function stack. The third and final section that we have here is the response. So once our function stack has executed, what does this API endpoint actually return? You can click on response items to adjust them. Just like functions, you can hover over them to add, toggle, clone, and additional options here. 
You can add new elements to your response by clicking add response right here. You can also click and drag to reorder your response items. Now, this is a little bit more important than your inputs because maybe you want your response to come in in a certain order. Most of the time, that's not going to matter, but you do have that option available here. Now, you do have some additional functions up here at the top, right under the name of the function stack in the description if you've set one. These are going to be a little bit different just depending on the exact type of function stack that you're working in. But you can get to things like the endpoint URL for APIs. You can quickly get to the request history for that API or custom function. You can create snippets. You can get a quick preview of your database schema if that's helpful to you as you're building your business logic and access to those keyboard shortcuts and additional help. In the upper right hand corner, we have our run and publish options here. So if we want to actually test this function stack, we can add our inputs here and click run. And it looks like our test was successful, which is good. You can copy the response or a curl command to run the same API request outside of Xano. You can look at the individual timing for each function so you know exactly how long each one took. And finally, from here, you can activate the debugger. Now, the debugger allows you some more advanced debugging in your function stacks. I'm not going to go into full detail on that here, but some of the simple stuff, you can quickly step through each function. Again, we have keyboard shortcuts for these as well. You can stop or restart the execution. And there are some advanced options available here, such as stepping into or out of custom functions, using breakpoints, and more. You can reset this panel by clicking reset down there. Any values that you place here in the input box will persist as long as your tab stays open, basically. So you can always come back and rerun this with those same values if you need to. If you're copying and pasting your inputs from somewhere else, you can easily format them right here. And you can expand this box if you need to, so you have more room to work with your inputs. For each of these sections, if you ever want them to stay open, you can just click the lock button and those will always stay open. Otherwise, Xana will open and close them just contextually based on what you're doing. We can revert any of the changes that we've made by clicking on this revertible changes option up here. We can step through these and see exactly what those changes contained. Or we can revert all changes at once, just like that. There are additional settings up here that, again, will be different depending on the type of function stack that you're building. And finally, you will want to make sure to publish your changes whenever you're ready for them to go live. So that was just a quick tour of the visual builder in Xano. I really hope you found this helpful. It should at least give you a good foundation to start building right away. We do have separate resources that get more in depth into each different type of function stack. So if you want to review those, those are available as well. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us in support. You can also reach us on the Xano community or just leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.